Welcome to the Solar 175 How to Play video series. This specific video is designed to teach you the elements of the game that are relevant to solo play only. Before watching this video, make sure to learn the base rules of the game, which are in the first video in this Solar 175 How to Play series. If you haven't done this already, then you can find the link to that video in the description below. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. In Solar 175, AI opponents can be added into multiplayer games. In this case, the maximum player count in a game with AI players is four. Alternatively, you can play against one or multiple AI opponents. To do this, you'll need to choose the difficulty level of the Minister AI software. These symbols will help you differentiate between different difficulty levels. These changes affect the actions the AI players take, the number of workers they draw and the rules they work on. You can mix and match how you control the AI players as you wish to tailor the difficulty level to your developing skill in the game. For example, if this card is used, then, if playing in easy mode, the AI player will draw four workers and each engineer will allow the AI player to build one outpost. If playing in normal mode, the AI player will draw five workers, and each will allow the AI player to build two outposts. As the AI player completes the easy mode task in green, and the normal mode task in blue. If playing in hard mode, the AI player will draw six workers, but each engineer drawn will still only allow the AI player to build two outposts, as there are no hard mode specific tasks in red. Now let's take a look at setup changes for solo games. First, take the three Minister Resource Allocation software cards and place them in reach of at least one human player. Set them out in the order shown from left to right. The card on the far left is the card that will be active in each round. Next, set out the playing materials for the AI player or players, as you would for a human player. However, you will not need to add the four outpost tokens to their available worker section, so add these outposts to the general pool of outposts. AI players therefore have four extra outposts in this pool when compared to human players. Lastly, for hard mode only, Add one algorithm worker to the bag of each AI player in addition to the four permanent starting workers. Now let's take a look at gameplay changes for solo games. During the draw phase, the AI players will draw a number of workers based on the difficulty level you have chosen to play against. This is shown in the top left of the current active minister card. Place these workers into the available worker section of the AI player's player board as normal. AI players will draw four workers on easy mode, five in normal mode and six in hard mode. During the assign workers phase, the AI players will do nothing, whereas human players play as normal. And during the action phase, you'll need to perform the following actions for each AI player, starting with the AI player who either has or is closest to getting the first player token. Number one, look at the far left minister card. This is the active card. Perform the corresponding actions for each worker the AI player drew during the draw phase of this round, as indicated on the action card. Do this from the top to the bottom of the card with any engineers they drew performing actions first and algorithms last. Number two, each worker corresponds to specific actions and is then discarded to the AI player's city leave card in the usual way. Number three, when all actions have been performed, flip the current active minister card to the reverse side and slide it to the far right space in the track. The card that was to its right is now the active card for the next round. AI players only ever perform actions this way. They never place workers into action spaces on their player board or ship cards. Legacy actions have a white box on them, indicating that the action needs to be unlocked by the legacy elements of the game. 
Ignore this action until this box is checked off during the campaign. So you must check the rulebook carefully for any references to AI actions that are unlocked by sections of the rulebook. The numbers on the boxes of the AI card show you which sections will affect the AI. If an action cannot be performed from the active card for any reason, ignore that action and perform all other relevant actions for that worker. If no actions are possible for that worker, ignore the current active card and perform the actions for this worker as described by the next minister card in the track. See if you can perform the actions for that worker indicated by that card instead. If this is also not possible, then check the third card of the row. If none of the three cards actions are possible, discard the worker to the AI player's city leave card and build one outpost for the AI player. As a reminder, you still need to move the first player token each round as normal AI players can also possess this token. Before I go through the AI actions, let's discuss Minister Resource Allocation Points, or MRA points for short. MRA points are the system the AI player uses to determine which hubs to place their workers onto and which political parties to vote for. MRA points correspond with the following tokens. Each military token the AI player possesses is worth one MRA point. Each megastructure funding token the AI player possesses is worth two MRA points. And each base they have built is worth two MRA points. When determining where to place a hub worker, you will often need to calculate the MRA points that this AI player currently possesses. Now let's take a look at the AI actions. Each of the minister cards will ask you to perform different actions for the AI player depending upon which workers the AI player draws in that round. Remember, just like human players, the AI player cannot remove their original four starting workers. If an action asks them to do this, then this action is ignored. If you see this icon, take an outpost of the AI player's colour from their supply and place it near their player board in the usual way. If you see this icon, take up to the indicated number of outposts, one or two, from the pool that the AI player has previously built and place it onto any location in the zone where the AI player currently has the least presence. If there is a tie for this, then place it into the zone which is currently worth the most points. And if there is still a tie, you decide the zone. If you see this icon, move an outpost belonging to the AI player from the zone currently worth the least influence points to the zone currently worth the most. If there is a tie, you decide the zone the outpost is taken from and moved into of the tied zones. If you see this icon, take one outpost token belonging to an opponent of the AI player from the zone that is currently worth the most influence points and place it into the zone which is currently worth the least. If there is a tie, then again you decide the zone the outpost is taken from and moved into of the tied zones. If more than one player has outposts in the zone that the outpost is to be taken from, then the outpost that is taken will be from the player who has the most in that zone. If there is still a tie, then take it from the player who currently has or is closest to receiving the first player token. If you see this icon, pay three credits, if able, and then take a mining resource token from Rio Astro and give it to the AI player. If you see this icon, remove the worker, pilot, general worker or algorithm and place it into the relevant hub, using the MRA points to decide which hub to place it into. For hubs not linked to a specific zone, the hub it's placed into is the one where the AI player currently has the most MRA points. If there is a tie, then place it into the hub for the item the AI player will receive from taking this action, if it is one of the tied hubs. If there is still a tie, then place it onto the military hub on the series. For zone hubs, place the relevant worker in the zone hub where the AI player currently has the most presence. If there is a tie for this, then place it into the zone which is currently worth the most influence points. If there is still a tie, you decide the zone hub it is placed into of the tied zone hubs. Finally, give the AI player a military token. 
If you see this icon, remove an engineer and place it onto the zone hub using the same rules for placing on hubs. Then pay one mining resource token and give the AI player a megastructure funding token. If you see this icon, remove a lobbyist and place it into the relevant hub using the same rules for hubs. Take a voting token, write the name of the AI player's corporation onto it and place it into the ballot box. If there is no worker removal arrow next to the voting symbol, then simply vote without also removing the lobbyist. And this means the AI player's starting lobbyist can also perform this action. Do note, if playing with only one AI player, you don't need to write the corporation name on the voting token. Just leave it blank. If you see this icon, gain the number of credits indicated by the image. These are tracked on the AI player's player board in the usual way. If you see this icon, hire the indicated worker in the usual way. AI players do not take a worker bonus for performing this action. If you see this icon, the AI player will move to a base location and build a base. This location is chosen by you. However, it must be somewhere in the highest numbered zone where the AI player can currently afford to build a base. If the AI player has built all their bases, they use this action to buy a new base. AI players do not gain bonuses for building bases. If you see this icon, move one of the AI player's ships to a mining location which currently has a mining resource token on it, and take that token. If the AI player has two or more ships, then move the ship which is closest to a mining resource token. If there's a tie for this, then you decide which token is taken. If there are no tokens left available, then this action cannot be performed. AI players are not limited by ship movement distances, and can therefore move as far as they like. Now let's look at the election phase. When AI players vote, they do not indicate a specific party, and instead write their corporation name onto the voting tokens they place into the ballot box. Therefore, during the election phase, add up the MRA points for military tokens, megastructure tokens and bases that the AI player currently has and determine which it has most of. Each vote the AI player made is allocated to the political party which best serves its needs. If it has the highest number of MRA points for military tokens, it will vote for the Workers' Union Party. If the highest number is for bases, it votes for Brave New Dawn. And if the highest number is for the megastructure funding, it votes for the United Federalists. In the case of a tie, of the tied parties, the AI player will vote for the party which appears first in this list. Brave New Dawn, Workers' Union Party, and United Federalists. In games with multiple humans and AI players, if you are ever asked to decide something for the AI player, for example, which location to build a base, this decision is always made by the player who currently has the first player token, or is closest to receiving it if it is currently being held by an AI player. You now know everything you need to play Solo 175 solo. If you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with us in the comments below. Enjoy the Solo 175 campaign. Bye.